Is gambling a sin? <gasps> well, before we can determine whether gambling is or is not a sin, we must define our terms. What is sin? What is gambling? Only after our terms are defined will we know if gambling is a sin. So, what is sin? Sin is described in the Bible as transgression of the law of God, 1 John 3, 4, and it's rebellion against God, Deuteronomy 9, 7, Joshua 1, 18. Sin had its beginning with Lucifer, who was apparently the most beautiful and powerful of all the angels. Lucifer, however, not content with his position, desired to be higher than God. Consequently, that decision led, well, out from free will, it led to his downfall. See Proverbs 16, 18. And it was also the beginning of sin. So see Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. Lucifer renamed Satan. He brought sin to the human race in the Garden of Eden where he tempted Adam and Eve with the same enticement. You will be like God. See Genesis 3, 5. Because sin always separates, the rebellion led to humankind's fall and separation from God. Since that time, sin has been passed down through all the generations of humankind, and we, the descendants, have inherited sin from Adam and Eve. Romans 5.12 tells us that through Adam, sin entered the world, and so death was passed on to all humans because the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 We are all sinners, not because we sin, rather, we sin because we are sinners from birth. See Psalm 51, 5. The depravity that is passed on to us is known as inherited sin. So in short, sin is what is wrong. So this article is an investigation to discover if gambling is wrong. Is gambling wrong? So I readily admit that this argument comes from a Christian worldview. However, it needs to be known and acknowledged that nothing can be wrong in an atheistic worldview. Without God, there is no right or wrong, only mere preferences that are subject to change at a moment's notice. Now, how can we know what is wrong unless we first know what is right? For we cannot know what is crooked unless we first know what is straight. Well, God is the absolute standard of what is good, right, and perfect. God's commandments reflect His holy nature, God's inspired word, which is accurate and reliable, reveals to us the nature of God. God's word instructs us and informs us as to what is right. With God's word as the standard for what is right, we can then judge accurately what is wrong by calling attention to what is not in alignment with God's word. And if the thought or the action is not in alignment with what is right, then the thought and or action is wrong. Now, I've got a lot of arguments based on the Christian worldview, but there's links that I will provide down below for all these arguments. But, okay, so the question is, what is gambling? What is gambling? According to dictionary.com, gambling is the act or practice of risking the loss of something important by taking a chance or acting recklessly. To gamble is staking or risking money of anything of value on the outcome of something involving chance. So, is gambling wrong? Now, if gambling is viewed as entertainment and it's kept in moderation, I mean, is it really any different from other activities that waste our money? Isn't responsible gambling like the same thing as spending a bit too much money on video games, seeing a movie at the theater, eating unnecessarily expensive meals, or purchasing unnecessary items that tend to clutter our homes? Well, gambling can be definitely viewed as another avenue, avenue of wasting money. However, it's different than most unnecessary purchases and entertainment choices for a few reasons. As I described in my other article I wrote, called The Mirage, casinos are rigged. <laughs> they use a variety of marketing schemes to entice gamblers to risk as much money as possible. They often offer inexpensive or even free alcohol, which encourages drunkenness, and thereby it's a decreased ability to make wise decisions. Everything in a casino is perfectly rigged for receiving money in large sums and giving almost nothing in return. Well, you know, except for fleeting and empty pleasures. 
Now, an examination of any random state's Department of Revenue for casinos is quite revealing. Down below, I'll provide a link for Mississippi. Billions of dollars comes in and not much money goes out. Gambling expenditures is around 500 plus billion dollars per year. That's billion with a B. That's more money than Americans spend per year on films, books, amusements, and music entertainment combined. What about lotteries? Well, <clears throat> lotteries attempt to portray themselves as a way to fund education and or social programs. However, studies show that lottery participants are usually those who can least afford to be spending money on lottery tickets. The allure of getting rich quick, that's, it's often too great a temptation to resist for those who are desperate. Unfortunately, the chances of winning are infinitesimal. The end result is that people ultimately lose their money that they could have otherwise saved and used for another purpose. However, many people claim that they gamble or play the lottery so that they can give the money to the church or to some other good cause. So can gambling proceeds please God? I mean, while this may sound like a good motive, the reality is that few people actually use gambling winnings for righteous purposes. Studies reveal that the vast majority of lottery winners are in, they're in even a worse financial situation a few years after winning the jackpot than they were before they even won the money at all. I mean, let's face it, this is reality. Money doesn't change a person's character. Rather, money ultimately amplifies a person's character. If a person isn't a good steward with a little amount, the person won't be a good steward with a large amount. Now it is written in Luke 16, 10 to 13. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, well, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. We are all called to be good stewards with all that has been given to us. Now, according to dictionary.com, a steward is a person who manages another's property or financial affairs, one who administers anything as the agent of another or others. As Christians, we are merely managing what God has allowed to be in our care. A prominent principle that permeates the Bible is stewardship. The Bible repeatedly and consistently paints the picture that God is the ultimate owner of everything and we are merely stewards just for the time being. See Psalm 24, 1, Ecclesiastes 5, 15, Luke 12, 42, 1 Timothy 6, 7, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 to 2. Look, we're all called to be stewards of the gospel that Jesus has entrusted to us through the command of the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 16 to 20. But in, in addition to that, we are all to be good stewards of everything the Lord has given to us or provided for us. We're all called to live a disciplined life. See Romans 8, 9, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. Galatians 5, 22 to 23, 2 Timothy 1, 7, Titus 1, 7 to 8, Hebrews 12, 11. And while living a disciplined life, we are to live a life of love toward others. So the question is, what is right? If we are to find out if gambling is wrong, we need to know what is right. Out of all 613 commandments, Jesus gave us the greatest commandment and a second that is like it. In Matthew 22, 37 to 40, it is written, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So, are we loving God when we gamble? Christians are not to allow their minds or bodies to be mastered by anything other than the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.12 Anything else leads to idolatry. 
And if you don't believe you are mastered by anything, I challenge you to read my other article I wrote called Break Every Chain. But if we are to love God, then we need to have faith that God will provide what we need, not necessarily what we want. It is written in Hebrews 11.6, And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Notice that the scripture says he rewards those who seek him. We are to be seeking the Lord, not money. Money is not the solution to all of our problems. Our Savior is the source and the solution. Many people write, they might raise an objection to this, right? And say, yo, people got to eat and you need money to eat. Well, don't forget what is written. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Deuteronomy 8.3, Matthew 4.4. 4. God's word alone is the sustenance for our soul. <clears throat> do you trust God? I mean, after all, faith is trust and we should trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3.5-6. If we trust in the Lord, we can be content in all circumstances. Philippians 4, 11 to 13. But gambling feeds covetousness, which is the opposite of God's call to contentment. Let us also remember what is written in 2 Thessalonians 3, 10 to 12. This is, this is exactly why, while with you, we commanded you, anyone not willing to work shouldn't get to eat. You see, we're hearing that some folks in the community are out of step with our teaching. They're idle. They're not working. They're really busy, but they're not doing anything. But they still expect to be fed. <laughs> if this is you or someone else in the community, we insist and urge you in the Lord Jesus, the anointed, you go to work quietly. Earn your keep. Put food on your own table. Supply your own necessities. So, in short, we've got work to do. There are no shortcuts to success in life. Gambling is risking losing your own money on a chance to receive everyone else's money without working for the money. So in essence, the gambler wants something for nothing. But there's one major problem with this scenario. Luck does not exist. Luck doesn't exist. Humans have rigged the casinos and it is in the favor of the house, not the gambler. Lotteries are designed to collect money. Chance without God is the personification of anarchy and nihilism. Everything not controlled by humankind is controlled by God. But God has allowed humans to have control in many areas of life. Sadly, gambling is one area of life where humans have control. Those in control have set up the odds in their favor and they are only taking advantage of those who gamble. So the question is, are we loving others when we gamble? I mean, you can choose to believe this or not, but we don't need a fortune to be able to love people. Check this out. In Acts 3, 5 to 6, it's written, The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Listen, Peter didn't have money, but he gave the man what he had, the gift of Christ Jesus. We may not have a lot of money, but we're all capable of giving what we do have. The good news, the gospel, all miracles come from God. Are miracles possible? Yes, if God exists, miracles are possible. But winning money from the lottery or casinos, that's not a miracle. It's odds. Is it amazing? Yes. Exciting? Yeah. Miracle? No. It's not a miracle. It's a numbers game and the odds are set up for you to lose. Now, as previously mentioned, expenditures on gambling, they're around 500 plus billion dollars every year. What could that amount of money do? Imagine the good, wholesome projects that could be supported by such an enormous amount of money for an annual budget. How many people could be fed? 
How many shelters could be built? How many water wells could be provided? How many missions could be funded to preach the gospel? How many churches could be planted? How many Bibles could be printed and handed out to those who don't have one? Instead of such worthwhile projects, however, these billions of dollars are dumped into a system that leads to addiction and abuse. It would be difficult, indeed, to conclude that gambling is good stewardship of the money with which God has entrusted a person. In reality, to pour one's money into a system that mathematically and statistically has been proven time and again to benefit the house and take from the gambler, that would certainly fall into the category of unfaithful stewardship. Now, while the Bible does not specifically condemn gambling, it does warn us to stay away from the love of money. See Matthew 6, 24, 1 Timothy 6, 10, Hebrews 13, 5. It also um, warns us to avoid get-rich-quick schemes. See Proverbs 13, 11, Proverbs 23, 5. Ecclesiastes 5.10. Furthermore, we're encouraged to use our financial resources to minister to people in need and to advance the kingdom of God. Ponder on the widow who gave her last coins to God's cause. Mark 12.43-44. And also the early Christians who donated their money and the goods to the church. Acts 4.32-37. Since gambling glorifies the love of money, tempts us with dreams of getting rich quickly, it sets up odds that heavily favor the house and not the gambler, and tempts us to direct our money toward frivolous earthly hopes instead of causes that help people in need and whatever advances the gospel, gambling is clearly an activity Christians should avoid. Now think about this. Truly, think about this. Gambling is a celebration of receiving all that others have lost. It's so important, I'm going to say it again. Gambling is a celebration of receiving all that others have lost. But you know what? Life isn't about what we can receive. Jesus told us, it's better to give than to receive. Acts 20, 35. But who are we giving to if we're giving that money to, to gambling? If we're using that money for gambling. <clears throat> it's written in Proverbs 28.20. 20, a faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. But, 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 okay. But what about the casting of lots, which is described several times in the Bible? Huh? Isn't that a form of gambling? Well, the Bible does not describe the specific method of casting lots, but it seems to have been similar to like drawing straws or throwing dice. Interestingly, God sometimes used this ancient practice as a means of showing his will. I mean, Aaron was instructed to choose between the sacrificial goat and the scapegoat by casting lots. That's in Leviticus 16. Joshua cast lots to divide land among the seven tribes. That's Joshua 18. The Israelites returning from Babylon cast lots to determine who got to live within the walls of rebuilt Jerusalem. That's in Nehemiah 11. Even the apostles of Christ cast lots to determine who would replace Judas. That's in Acts 1. Now, how can this sort of activity identify God's will if it is based on a chance outcomes? Well, the Bible says the outcomes were not left to chance. Proverbs 16.33 says... The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. Now first, casting lots is not staking or risking money or anything of great value on the uncertain outcome. And it is the desired outcome, it's not a celebration of gaining what everyone has lost. Therefore, casting lots was not the same thing as gambling. Rather, it was an acceptable way to discern God's will in the era before the Holy Spirit was given to believers. Casting lots never occurred again after the Holy Spirit was given to believers. And this is why casting lots should not be regarded as an acceptable means of discovering God's will in this present day. We have the whole Bible plus the Holy Spirit to guide us. So we don't need to cast lots. But the summary, let's summarize this. 
Casinos, lotteries, and gambling websites all aim to take your money. That is the goal, and they are obviously achieving that goal. After all, they are businesses whose aim is to take money, and thus they scheme to get you to risk as much as possible so that you may lose as much as possible, and they can gain as much as possible. I mean, if that weren't the ultimate end goal, they wouldn't rake in billions of dollars like they do. But they do. I urge you to resist the temptation to chase get-rich-quick schemes. At the very least, gambling will lead to loss. However, gambling possesses the potential to ruin lives. God gives people time, talent, and treasure with an expectation of accountability. Read the parable of the talents, Matthew 25, 14 to 30. What are you doing with what God has given you? So here's the conclusion. Gambling is first and foremost a moral issue. There was a time in American society when the majority of people revered God's absolute moral standard and considered such things as abortion, homosexuality, drunkenness, cursing, the gambling to be wrong. Obviously, times, circumstances, and culture have changed. But God and His Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. A genuine Christian is the one who eliminates from daily life the vice and immorality that is characteristic of a corrupt and contaminated culture that continually desires to abandon God's will in favor of the standards of a sick and sinful society. Instead of joining a sinful society, we need to study God's word in order to learn how God desires us to live. We should not be followers of the faithless. Instead, we need to be leaders of love. It's written in Romans 12, 1 to 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Rather than asking if gambling is wrong, we need to seek the Lord and know what is right. Just as it is written in Micah 6, 8, God has already told us what is right. We need to keep our focus on what is right. We are to love God and to love others. We need to earn our money and then be good stewards of what we do have by using it wisely to love God and to love others. If we're not good stewards with what God has given us, we're not loving God as we should. If we're throwing away money to businesses whose aim is to take advantage of people, then we're not using that money to love others. The bottom line is that lotteries, casinos, and other ways of gambling are merely clever ways of stealing from the general population. Gambling is a spiritual and financial time bomb in a pretty package, and no demographic group is immune to the social pathologies associated with it. Gambling associates itself with a number of problems, including alcohol, drug abuse, prostitution, violent crime, embezzlement and bankruptcy, theft, spouse and child abuse, pornography, obscenity. This is why gambling is not a victimless crime. What appears to be harmless entertainment with the uh, investment of one's own money becomes a destructive and costly influence on the person and the community as a whole. The gambling industry is by nature parasitical and predatory. Now Mark Twain once shrewdly observed that the best throw at dice is to throw them away. But don't take Mark Twain's word for the final authority on the matter. In fact, it doesn't even matter what I say about this matter. What matters is God's word. But clearly, God's word tells us that gambling is wrong because it is not in alignment with God's absolute moral standard of what is right. I challenge you to be a good steward with what God has given you and to use it to love God and to love others. 
Are you gambling more than you intend to risk? A person choosing to live a life out of alignment with God's absolute moral standard is a person gambling with his or her eternity. I challenge you to consider all that you gamble with every choice you make. I also challenge you to read my other article, Subtle, and examine the subtlety of sin. I bet you're gambling more than you intend to risk. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's Romans 6, 23. Listen. To find out why I am a Christian, read my other article, Why I Am a Christian. May God bless you as you continue to seek the Lord, and may God bless you as you continue to bless others.